this English class. It was monthly, only once a month. Uh, so without uh, any further ado now, uh, we are going to have a brief lesson based on the liturgical calendar of our mother church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tohedo Church. Uh, Deacon Nicodemus is going to teach you a special lesson regarding the heavenly choirs, cherubim and seraphim, the high-ranking angels. So please put your hands together and invite Deacon Nicodemus. just so we get to know who they are, what they are, and um, why they are important. Does uh, anybody, until then, does anybody know who Seraphim or Kirubian are? Hands? Or angels, yeah. So they are part of a hierarchy, and um, I am going to get into that. I just want to go to the next slide. So, who are the seraphim and the cherubim? The word seraphim in Hebrew means flaming. Um, they are the four living creatures. They hold and bear the throne of God and worship Him nonstop. They are the highest of the angelic beings and they stand guard of the Garden of Eden. Um, this being said, as you can see on the picture, uh, the seraphim and the cherubim are the angels um, with six wings, um, with with uh, with many faces. So we're going to get into what kind of faces they have and why they're like that, and so forth. Um, how do they worship God? So we know that they worship God uh, because the Bible tells us so, and um, we, we acknowledge that even in our Kiddasi, uh, in our holy liturgy, Surafir, uh, Wakirubir, Isak Guru Lotu, that Kirubir and Surafir, they bow to God and they worship Him, um, saying, Holy, holy art thou, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, perfect Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your holiness, of, of the holiness of your glory. Um, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, we can read that it says, And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, we can read that it says, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of His glory. 
These are the chants that the seraphim and the cherubim say uh, to God the Most High, um, non-stop. So they say this day and night. Uh, you know, we come to church and we pray, and uh, we pray at our homes, but at some point in life, you know, uh, during our day, we're gonna have to take a pause and do other things, right? It can be going to school, it can be going to work, it can be eating, cooking food, uh, watching a show, but once uh, you're in the presence of God and in, your, in the heavenly realm, worship is non-stop, so there's no breaks. It's 24 seven, it keeps going, it keeps going. And so how does the Bible describe the seraphim? Um, in Ezekiel chapter 1, if you guys have the chance, you guys can read it. But uh, in briefly, just to give you the idea, it says, As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man, each of the four had a face of a lion, and of the right side, each of the four had a face of an ox, and on the left side, each of the four had a face of an eagle. Of an eagle. So that's four beings. There's a face of a human, a face of a... Uh, of an ox, a face of a lion, and a face of an eagle. And Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2, uh, it describes them saying, Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. So you can see in the picture, kind of cut off, but there's six wings on that, um, that cherubim, where two of them are covering his face, two are used to fly, and two are used to cover his feet. It just cut off a little bit, but there were a little bit more pictures. And that's fine. Uh, and in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, it says, The four living creatures each had six wings, and they were full of eyes around and within. So where do we find them? Where are these seraphim and cherubim? Seraphim and cherubim. Uh, the first place we can find them, and which is, I guess, common sense, is the throne of God. So in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 16, it says, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. So as we talked about earlier, Surafir and Kirubir, they carry the throne of God, and they surround them. Um, so we know that we can find them there. A second place we can find Surah um, Fayyad are at the gates of the Garden of Eden. Um, after Adam and Eve committed the first sin and were kicked out of um, the Garden of Eden, we know that God placed the cherubim to protect that place and that um, mankind can never enter back. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, it says, so he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree to life, the tree of life. So you can see a kind of, of a picture of the valley of the Garden of Eden, and the cherubim and the seraphim uh, standing guard, not letting anyone pass through. Last but not least, um, another place you can find the cherubim and the seraphim is God's throne on earth, the Ark of the Covenant. So in the Old Testament, we know that the Ark of the Covenant was built um, directly by humans, but it was instructed by God, uh, by God Himself. And so in Exodus chapter 25, verse 20, it says, The cherubim shall have their wings spread upward, covering the mercy seat up with their wings and facing one another. The faces of the cherubim are to be turned towards the mercy seat. So, just like that. So we know that God's um, heavenly throne is surrounded and carried by the cherubim and the seraphim. Um, likewise, on earth, His ark, the covenant that He was that was given to us is also um, covered by Surah and Nakirubi. Uh, in Exodus chapter 25, verse 22, it says, And there I will meet you, uh, and, and there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. 
And so we know that wherever God is, the Seraphim and Kirvim are there, um, you know, standing guard and uh, carrying his throne. Okay. So now you might be wondering why is there a face of a man? Why is there a face of an ox? Why is there a face of a lion? And why the face of an eagle? So um, we resemble these faces and uh, beings to the Gospels. So for example, the Gospel of Matthew, written by St. Matthew, um, the human face is what resembles, um, uh, what, what resembles Matthew. Uh, so it says, declaring your birth, Matthew resembles a man declaring your birth from the seed of David, beginning with the first among the ancient fathers. And we can get this from the source of Apotheon uh, Quran, Zarayabo. And likewise, if you go to St. Mark, uh, if you go to St. Mark, uh, St. Mark is resembled with the lion uh, who roars, declaring and preaching to those in Egypt with the upright Orthodox faith. St. Luke is uh, resembled to be the, uh, the ox or the calf who preached your humility, humility uh, you're laying down among the donkey and oxen, you, you're being wrapped in the swaddled clothes and being in stable with the Virgin Mary. So it's this sense of the ox and the cattle, Christ showing his humility to us. And so we resemble the ox of the cherubim to St. Luke because he is the author who described more about Christ's humility. Uh, St. John the Eagle resembles uh, the eagle who flies upon high and shouts on high and who interprets the divine nature and who is in the sea of wisdom and the depth of prophecy. Um, like an eagle uh, who can see far and who can fly uh, high, St. John uh, also prophesies a lot and he wrote the book of Revelation and saw many things um, above and uh, below. And my last point will be, I just wanted to share one last thing before I finish up. Was the nine rings of angels. So earlier I said that the seraphim and the cherubim, seraphim and the are part of a hierarchy. And so they are the highest um, of the hierarchy of angels. Um, after that, we can find the thrones, the dominions, the powers, the authorities, principalities, Archangels like Saint Michael, Saint Gabriel, and then we find uh, normal angels, which are ranked number nine. So this is the new Nagar Nagar And with that, I would like to end my teaching. But thank you, God bless. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in songs, hymns, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. Uh, thank you, Nikadibas, for the wonderful, wonderful lesson about the cherubim and seraphim, the highest uh, uh, rank, who have the highest rank among the angels. As you know, angels are servants of God. They were created to praise God unceasingly. They praise Him without stop. It's a non-stop service in heaven. Uh, and also angels help us raise our prayers. Uh, they bring God's blessings to us. So in the Bible, they are known as ministers as Deacon uh, Nicodemus wonderfully illustrated based on the Bible and the liturgical tradition of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Uh, it's believed that there are about nine ranks of the angels, as he enumerated earlier, but we don't know specifically how many angels are there in heaven serving God. They are innumerable. First of all, you can't see angels with your naked eyes. They are invisible and also innumerable. You can't, you can't, you can't count them. Even modern science 
usually says that we can't count stars, right? Even there are a lot of galaxies. No one knows how many stars God created. As we can't know the number of stars, we are not able at the same time to know how many angels God created. They are invisible, they are powerful. Symbolically, in the Bible it said that they were created uh, as powerful as fire. And they, they have special power. Uh, one interesting aspect about the angels is that our Lord Jesus Christ once said, speaking about kids, little about little ones. People usually thought that young kids like you, children, are not important. But Jesus said, be careful. Be careful not to offend, not to stumble any of the little ones, any of these children. Don't offend them. Why? As our Lord Jesus Christ said, because their guardian angels see the face of my, fa my Father in heaven. That means angels serve God in heaven as Nicodemus wonderfully put it. There are cherubim with lots of eyes, seraphim with six wings. They represent the throne of God. They can't contain God, but God's glory is revealed on them. So what I wanted to share with you according to uh, the gospel is that our Lord Jesus Christ said, little ones like you, kids have angels who protect them. Have you ever heard the word guardian angel? Everybody, every human being has a guardian angel. You can pray to God saying, please God, help me know the name of my guardian angel. I, I want to know him. I want to know the name of my guardian angel who protects me, whom you send for my protection. You know, there are people who are interested in knowing about demons, who mention the name of Lucifer, blah, blah. These people belong to the dark part of the uh, Satanic kingdom. As we are the children of God, we should be interested in knowing about angels, not about demons. We have nothing to do with demons. Demons are forces of darkness. They serve the kingdom of darkness. We are the children of God, so we belong to God's kingdom. So ask God in your prayer. First, thank you. I thank you. I praise you, my Lord, for giving me a guardian angel. Please help me know my guardian angel. You know, what's uh, common for all the angels is that each angel carries the name of God. For instance, tomorrow we are going to have an uh, annual feast. There will be a table celebration, very colorful as you know. We are going to remember in our celebration one of the great angels. Who can, who can tell me his name? Do you know who we are going to commemorate tomorrow? Come here if you know the answer. All right. What's your name first? Kedus. You have a holy name. Kedus means? Blessing. Not a blessing. You are blessed. Kedus means holy. Nice name. So who are we going to commemorate tomorrow? Tomorrow, according to the Ethiopian calendar, is Sanias Ran. Of course, the annual, annual celebration is on the 12th day of the 10th month of the Ethiopian calendar. Sanias We will commemorate one of the high ranking angels, whose name is Saint Michael. Wow, very good. Clap for Jesus. We are going to commemorate tomorrow. In our case, we call him, not Michael. How do we call uh, this angel in Amarinya? Beta Mariam, come. Beta Mariam, by the way, is one of the candidates to be deacon soon. He will be ordained. Clap, yes, you're right. He will be ordained as a deacon, so he's very close to the Ethiopian tradition. Can you say Michael? 
But how do we call Michael in Kiz or in Amari? Kiddus Mikhail. Excellent. Mikhail. You know, what do you hear at the end? The word El. The word El represents the name of God. Mikael means who is like God. Who is like God? No one is like God. God is our creator, our maker. So no one can search the attributes of God. Even the angel's name testify God's glory. Mikael is one of the top high ranking angels. Okay, tell me any other angel's name that you know, other than Mikael. Come, okay, from the girl's side. All right, come here. What's your name, Tom? Elia, tell me one name of uh, an angel that you know. Kedus Mikael. He said already Mikael. Gabriel. Gabriel, very good. You see, Mikael means who is like God, Mika, even in Gus we say Manu. Manu means in Gus who we say like in Amarina Manu. So Mika means who is like God. God is, you know, unknowable. He is beyond our comprehension. He is beyond our understanding. So uh, this sweet girl told me the name of another. Is your name Eliana? Eliana told me the name of another uh, angel which is Gabriel. You see, and every angel's name, every angelic name ends with E-L, which is God's name. El means God. So, if Mikael means who is like God, Gabriel means the servant of God. Okay? Gabriel means, in is even, to serve. Gabriel, for instance. Servant of Mary. Gabriel, servant of God. Mikhail means? I just told you now. What does Mikhail mean? Who is like God? Gabriel means? You forgot? Even after a minute? The servant of God. Okay. Any other angel's name that you need to remember before we go to the final benediction by our Father, His Grace, Abuna Dimitros. Do, are you sure you know the name of an angel? Come here. You are one of the candidates for the Apollet, right? You are studying with Abba Kios. What's your name? El Nathan. El Nathan. Tell me one of the names of these great angels. Kudus Rafael. Very good. Raphael. In English, Raphael. Or in English, in Amarinya. Rufael. If Mikael means who is like God, and Gabriel means the servant of God, Raphael. Anyone who knows what Raphael means? You, you may remember in our tradition we have a special day when we commemorate Saint Raphael or Rufael during the final month, the little month, which is known as the Ethiopian calendar has 13 months, not 12. So, not 12 only. In that little month, uh, it has five, sometimes six days. We do remember Saint Raphael and kids in Ethiopia because uh, that season is rainy season. They go outside when it rains and they have fun, saying it is a blessing. Those who are sick look for healing on that specific day of Raphael. I gave you a clue. I say healing. So Raphael means? Any guess? Are you sure? Okay, what's the answer? Healing? Yes, the healing of God. Very good. Raphael means the healing of God or God heals. One more angel, at least, from the boy's side. Who? Who? Are you sure you know? Okay, come. Come to the pulpit. Hurry up. We are running out of time. You don't have a Natala today. Where is your Natala then? Why did you put it there? Okay, come. Come for now. What's your name? Luke. What's your name? Luke. Luke. Yes. So, what is <laughs> uh, 
a link la you can tell us. Excellent. I told you that every angel's name ends with L, L which is the name of God. Michael means? Boys, Michael means what? Who is like God? Gabriel means? The servant of God. Raphael means? The healing of God or God heals. Finally, Urahel means the light of God. You see, light, Ur means in Hebrew, light. In their names, angels glorify God's name. Even we give for our kids a name related to these angels, right? I know a boy who is named Michael or Michael, who is like God. I know a boy who is Samuel, which means the name of God or God has heard. It has end. Even Daniel, it has E-N. Daniel means God is my judge. What does your name signify? What's the meaning of your name? If you don't know the, name, the meaning of your name, go home and ask your parents. At least in your names, you need to glorify the glory of God. You, you need to testify to God's glory as angels do. Beta Maria wants to answer this question. I will give the final chance to Beta Maria. What's your name and what's its meaning? Now an assignment for you guys. Go home and tell your parents. Today, Deacon Nicodemus taught us also a priest at church said, every angel's name carries the name of God. Every angel's name has N at the end, which is God's name. Mommy, Daddy, what kind of name did you give me? Am I honoring God in my name as I'm supposed to do it throughout my name? For instance, here I see one of our uh, uh, amazing girls who grew up in our church, whose name is very meaningful. Uh, sorry for being a sudden, but some Ethiopians are very careful. For instance, we have a girl by name Sanot, whose last name is Tasama. Sanot Tasama means prayer has been heard. Very beautiful. Please put your hands together for the family for giving them such a name. Okay, Peter Mario, give us the meaning of your name. If you don't know the meaning of your name, I will be surprised. Uh, First, your name is? Which means? In English? Um, House of Mary. Excellent, House of Mary. Ask your parents about your names. At least know your baptismal names. If, if you don't know your baptismal name, the church gives you a special name. For instance, Fikra Mare, the love of Mary. Kunfa Mikael, the wing of the angel Michael, and so on. Even when the church baptizes you, the church assigns the names of the saints so that you may have a saintly life. Let's stand up for final prayer and benediction. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen.
Yeah, I know. 